Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Pennsylvania Green Ribbon Schools Award Ceremony. My name is Lori Bronstein, and I'm the president of the Pennsylvania Green and Healthy Schools Partnership. We are honored to have so many guests with us today, but most of all, the three schools who are being recognized for their achievements, Patton Middle School, the School District of Jenkintown, and Northampton Community College. You know, there are 3,000 public school buildings across 500 districts in the Commonwealth. Add in the private schools and the colleges and universities, and nearly a quarter of our state's population are working or learning in school buildings every day. That's why we all know the importance of striving relentlessly to put all of our children in schools where they have clean air to breathe, where energy and resources are conserved, and where they can be inspired to dream of a brighter future here in Pennsylvania. When the U.S. Department of Education created the Green Ribbon Schools Award back in 2011, many of our partners were already working to make Pennsylvania schools environmentally friendly, healthy, and cost-efficient places of learning. We were ahead of the curve. Thanks to the early leadership of folks like Mike Walsh, who during his time at PDE inspired us with the vision of a statewide coalition. This vision eventually became the PA Green and Healthy Schools Partnership. This partnership is the collaboration of government agencies, nonprofits, K through 12 schools, higher education institutes, businesses and individuals, all who are committed to promoting healthy schools within the Commonwealth that have a minimal impact on the environment while promoting the sustainable literacy of all students. We officially launched on Earth Day this year with the release of our website, pagreenschools.org, and the formal announcement that we adopted Eco Schools USA as our statewide framework with the goal of recognizing all those schools in Pennsylvania that are currently implementing green initiatives, no matter how big or how small those steps may be, as well as to provide schools that need guidance along their path towards sustainability. Our partner, the National Wildlife Federation, is the U.S. host of the Eco Schools program, which is the largest and oldest green schools program in the world. Participating schools earn recognition for their efforts with bronze, silver, or the green flag award levels. The Eco Schools program is intentionally aligned with the U.S. Department of Education's Green Ribbon Schools Award. Modeled on the prestigious Blue Ribbon Schools Award, the Green Ribbon Schools Award is recognized each year by the U.S. Department of Education to recognize K through 12 public and private schools across the nation that are exemplary across three pillars. The first pillar is reduced environmental impact of the buildings and grounds. The second is improved health and wellness of the students and staff. And the third is effective environmental and sustainability education. In 2015, the Department of Ed invited higher education institutions to submit applications for the very first time. Pennsylvania has participated in the national program for all four years since its inception, and we now have a total of 12 honorees within our state. This year, we have two national honorees, the Charles Patton Middle School and Northampton Community College and one statewide nominee, the School District of Jenkintown. You will hear more about each school's accomplishment as each cabinet secretary shares his or her thoughts in just a few minutes. But first, a few acknowledgments. We are honored to have so many friends and supporters here with us today, folks who know that Pennsylvania is playing an important role in the National Green Schools Movement. I'd like to take a moment to recognize these folks, but please hold your applause till the end. Of course, we are thankful that we have three cabinet secretaries with us today, and they will be speaking momentarily. We would also like to acknowledge some members of the General Assembly who have joined us today. Representative Stephen McCarter, 
Representative Marsha Hahn, Representative Jack Rader, Representative Lisa Bascolo, Representative Mario Scavello, and Representative Art Haywood. I should also note that some of our schools were able to go to the House and Senate this morning and meet these legislators, and that was a really great treat for them. A special thank you to Heidi Kunka, Energy Program Specialist from the PED, PADEP and a member of our Advisory Council for her invaluable contribution to today's event. So, the PA Green and Healthy Schools Partnership would like to acknowledge the presence of the following members of our Executive Committee, Advisory Council, and other partners of the Green Schools Movement for joining us here today. This is in semi-alphabetical order, and I apologize because I know in advance that I'm going to miss people. Everybody is important to us, everybody in this room. So, um, Dave Bauman and Jennifer Dugan are Green Ribbon School partners at PDE. Karen Lehman and Kim Tesserario from the Center for Schools and Communities. Kim Martinez and Hillary Falk are partners at the National Wildlife Federation. Michelle Nakarati Chapkis, Women for a Healthy Environment. Lorna Rosenberg, EPA Region 3. Estelle Rupert, Green Schools, Blue Waters. Todd Christoffel from the Department of Health. Nick Semin, Semin Consulting Group, and our Vice President. Tricia Sheehan from Moms Clean Air Force. Bill Sutton from U.S. Green Building Council of Central PA, and also Eileen Reavy from USGBC Central PA. Mike Walsh from DCNR, our co-founder. Cynthia Wollman from Sustainability Consulting and also representing Jenkintown School District. And Alana Zola from Keystone Energy Efficiency Alliance. That's a mouthful. Alana also manages Moving to the Head of the Class Awards, which focuses on energy efficiency and conservation in K through 12 schools in PA. And now, for the heart of our program, the recognition of our Green Ribbon Schools by our Cabinet Secretaries. First, the Department of Environmental Protection has played a key role, a leadership role, since the inception of the Pennsylvania Green and Healthy Schools Partnership and in the years that led to its creation. Secretary John Quigley has been supportive of this work going back to his time at DCNR, and we are so appreciative that he is here with us today. Please welcome Secretary Quigley. Thank you. It's great to be here with all of you today. Uh, it's an honor to be here with my cabinet colleagues, uh, Secretary Rivera and Secretary Dunn, uh, to an old conspirator and friend and now new DCNR employee, Mike Walsh, the co-founder of this really visionary effort, uh, and to be with all of you. Uh, Governor Wolf is committed to creating jobs that pay, schools that teach, and government that works. Well, today we're honoring three Pennsylvania schools that teach by example. I'm happy to be here to congratulate our U.S. Department of Education's Green Ribbon School Pennsylvania nominee, the School District of Jenkintown, and two national Green Ribbon honorees, Charles Patton Middle School and Northampton Community College. Honorees of the Green Ribbon Schools program are expected to excel in three pillars. First, reduced environmental impacts of buildings and grounds. Second, improved health and wellness of students and staff. And third, effective environmental education. I'll be sharing some great examples of that first pillar, reduced environmental impacts from our 300 schools that are here with us today. For pillar one, our schools are judged on the following areas, greenhouse gas emission reductions, energy efficiency, on-site renewable energy, purchase of green power, water conservation, solid and hazardous waste reduction, and expanded use of alternative transportation. Uh, first, I want to talk about our Pennsylvania nominee, the school district of Jenkintown. These are three great stories. Uh, the school district of Jenkintown started, stated in their application, quote, we recognize that by reducing our use of natural resources, we are not only being good stewards of the environment, but also acting in a fiduciary way for the school's finances, demonstrating the connection between environmental responsibility and fiscal responsibility. Jenkintown has participated in the Energy Star Portfolio Manager Program for three years, tracking their energy usage, which I think is a very commendable step because you simply can't manage what you don't measure. Since Jenkintown is a true neighborhood school, there are no buses transporting students to and from school every day, which reduces their carbon footprint. In addition to walking, students utilize the nearby SEPTA regional rail. 
Jenkintown has received several DEP grants that have reduced its environmental impacts, a growing greener grant for an innovative stormwater management project, and an energy harvest grant for a solar PV array. So Jenkintown, thank you for this great work. Now to our national honorees. First, the Charles Patton Middle School of Kennett Square. Charles Patton Middle School has reduced their water usage for irrigation by 65% over the last five years by using native plants for their school grounds and installing a drip line irrigation system for their greenhouse. Patton Middle School participated in DEP's first Keystone Energy Education Program workshop in the fall of 2013, and they've reduced their energy usage by 20% over the last five years. They have a small solar carport and a solar array that powers their greenhouse, and they participate in a demand response program with their local elect electric utility. At Patton, a school lunch investigation project, uh, school lunch investigation, <laughs> measured the waste generated by the school population, resulting in stronger emphasis on recycling, composting, and reducing overall waste. Great investigation. They've also shortened and scheduled their school bus runs to be more efficient and reduce fuel usage. Thank you for this great work, Patton Middle School. And now Northampton Community College of Bethlehem. Uh, Northampton Community College is one of only nine higher education institutions receiving the Green Ribbon Award this year across the country, adopted a 10-year environmental and energy conservation plan in 2008. The college annually hosts a household hazardous waste collection event for Northampton County residents. They've established a no-mow area on their main campus to reduce fossil fuel use and allow that land to go to succession. So over time, they will increase the amount of, the amount of wooded area on their campus. And the entire three-building Monroe campus of the college has been designated and constructed to meet a minimum LEED Silver standard from the U.S. Green Building Council and is currently awaiting certification. And one really impressive feature is that they have a large solar canopy that provides 40% of the campus's electricity. Thank you, NCC, for great work. Uh, folks, all of these schools prove that reducing environmental impacts, educating the next generations, of Pennsylvanians to be good stewards of our natural resources and saving money all go hand in hand. We're fortunate to have educational institutions like these three stellar schools in Pennsylvania that recognize this principle. And on behalf of Governor Wolf, I want to extend our sincere congratulations and thanks to all. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Quigley. So, outdoor recreation and wellness is a key part of the work of the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. Leading DCNR is someone who has promoted environmental education throughout her career. Please welcome S Secretary Cindy Adams Dunn. Thank you, Lori, and I'm uh, very uh, pleased and proud to share this uh, podium today with Secretary Rivera and Secretary Quigley. Uh, I think they exemplify um, the governor's goals of uh, you know, schools that teach, government that works, jobs that pay, and it's uh, yeah, very, very much an honor to be positioned between uh, these two fine uh, civil servants. And it's great to be part of honoring uh, the schools being honored today. It's, uh, it's, I stand in awe of your accomplishments um, and I can't understate the importance of the work you do. Um, I can say, just speaking for myself, I was so fortunate in, in my life to have a few teachers along the way, and I mean just two that I can think of, that before the term eco-schools was coined, before school teachers really had a formal framework for getting kids outdoors and uh, doing outdoor classrooms around the schoolyard, I had a couple of teachers that did it, and that's what inspired me uh, toward biology and then eventually environmental education and activism. I really uh, appreciate that and you just can't uh, understate the value of a teacher or an administrator that really gets that because year after year after year they create good stewards for our, our environmental future. I do want to recognize and acknowledge some of the folks from DCNR that are here. Um, I was very fortunate to uh, talk Mike Walsh into joining DCNR as our Deputy of Administration. And uh, for, for Mike, I think the decision of his coming in was an actual gauge on his impact on all things green. And could he, could he do it in his current role or would he do it better in DCNR? I'm so happy to say, I think I tipped that needle about 51% and uh, got him in. So we'll use him well there uh, to advance this initiative and other things. I also want to point out that Dave Kemmer, our Director of State Parks, is here, and Terry Crommel. 
And I'm very pleased to say in our uh, state park systems particularly, but in other parts of our agency as well, we uh, touch a lot of lives and touch a lot of students uh, with our outdoor programming and our environmental ed programming. We have 3,000 programs uh, for students each year. That's a lot. I mean, uh, we have 120 parks. Many of them have environmental ed programs. Uh, we've had 120 teacher workshops, you know, in service and otherwise, and we've reached 100,000 students and uh, with impactful, well thought out uh, programming. So I'm really pleased with that uh, record and, and really appreciate, I see so many familiar faces here in this room have helped shape that and are partners for that. And that's uh, something we obviously want to continue and grow. And I really want to acknowledge the leadership of the National Wildlife Federation, uh, Vice President Hillary Falk and Kim Patton, who's like the energizer bunny for eco schools. When I first was introduced to the eco schools program, I was, um, really astonished at the wisdom behind that program, uh, the, the re realistic, achievable, but important actions that schools can take that reach out and find you know, that one teacher, that one administrator that's fertile ground for this and allows them to grow and have a framework to uh, advance their good work. Because often you know, that teacher may be alone or may have maybe a, a co-conspirator, but, but not a big family. So, uh, that is so important because when those teachers find that, they understand they're not alone and there's a whole bunch of people like them across uh, the, the country and across Pennsylvania. So, so we're delighted to be part of the Green Schools uh, Initiative and we will certainly uh, continue that effort and, and due to the inspiration of the schools that have picked it up and have won this award today. And I'm going to talk about uh, Pillar 2, which I'll do um, I was planning to do it in, in a more general way, but uh, since Secretary Quigley did a good job at highlighting some specific examples, I will, I will pick out a few specific examples. So these are the programs that promote outdoor recreation and fitness, that promote outdoor learning, that use the schoolyard well, that promote health um, through connections with uh, healthier food streams. And uh, the, the awardees today uh, have many examples that exemplify uh, Pillar 2. And, I'm just astonished at the accomplishments um, that were provided. So, so given that these are the award winners, I know there are schools across Pennsylvania that are achieving some level of this, but um, their achievements and their, their projects are there are too many to mention, but they use green pro products. This is a Patton Middle School, for instance, integrated pest management system uh, with student health as a central focus. That's a lifelong learning for students. Wellness Committee that's focused on the mental and physical health. I think the connection to mental health by connection to the outdoors is just more and more understood and talked about and is a critical function of uh, being outdoors. And the more we can teach at a young age, the important it is. Healthier meals in the cafeteria. Uh, they're describing food in the cafeteria like I've never seen in uh, my history. Patton Middle School, 90% of the grounds are devoted to vegetable and flower gardens. Like, wow. <laughs> Two outdoor classrooms, 30 raised beds, greenhouse, two high tunnels, wildlife and native plant habitats, solar array, compost, local a relationship with a local farmer. This is an uh, incredible work. And I, you know, when I first uh, met Betsy Phillips, I was Betsy Ballard. I was so astonished by the um, the breadth of the work being done. It was uh, really inspiring, and I'm so so pleased to see you here today as an awardee. So the pillar two accomplishments. Uh, yeah, or a couple pages. So I'll, I'll, I'll shoot now to the school district of Jenkintown. A cleaning program for the cafeteria that deals with allergies and asthma. Anything you know about asthma? The important uh, health issue today, increasingly important, and uh, highlights that and takes care of that. 75% of students participate in extracurricular sports activities. How's that for health and wellness? That's fantastic. And they've implemented a grant from Independence Blue Cross for healthy lifestyles in grade three to six, as we know, a very fertile time to teach. Switching to Northampton Community College, uh, walking trails uh, outfitted with mileage and directional signs. That's something we're trying to do in our state park system, again, to motivate and add the health element to, to outdoor recreation. Um, they have uh, a community garden known as East 40 Garden that connects gardeners from the college and the community. Uh, for service learning, sustainable gardening, ecological wellness, wellness, and healthy living. Biology students conduct flora fauna inventories. Again, that's something, uh, that kind of learning, that kind of science can motivate a student uh, to continue into a, uh, a field that could lead them to uh, employ a DCNR someday. Um, <laughs> walking trails, et cetera, uh, sem wellness seminars, cooking demonstration. They have a uh, faculty staff committee that are called the Wellness Warriors. 
again, a, a, a ongoing structure to continue to promote the Pillar 2 practices. So again, I am um, just so pleased to be here and, and, and pleased to be proud uh, to be part of the lineup that's honoring you folks here today. And uh, we hope that this will encourage and inspire uh, more Pennsylvania schools to follow the direction of the three awardees here today. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Dunn. So education, as you know, is the cornerstone of this work. And increasing student achievement underscores every goal of the Green Ribbon School program. Having three secretary secretaries here today highlights just how important that is. As you may know, the Department of Education nominates schools each year to the U.S. Department of Education, and Pennsylvania has been a leader in this program since it began. In its first year, Pennsylvania had the most applications of every state in the nation. And with the addition of higher education nominees this year, as you heard from Secretary Quigley, we are proud that Pennsylvania is one of just nine states that includes a college or university among its list of winners. That's quite an accomplishment. To make remarks and present the recognition certificates, please join me in welcoming the Pennsylvania Secretary of Education, Pedro Rivera. Good afternoon, everyone. Afternoon. I don't know. I think we can do a little better than that. <laughs> We're here to celebrate. It's summer. We're speaking Green Ribbon Schools, health. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. All right. There we go. So um, before I start, I have to just take a quick moment and share um, three very specific uh, thank yous and, and to the group and to this opportunity to speak and address everyone today. So first, I'd like to thank you for giving me an opportunity to um, celebrate and recognize the team at, at PD for some great work. Uh, you know, specifically, um, David and Jennifer, thank you very much for um, everything that you've done to, to bring this together. Yeah, let's give them a round of applause. They did awesome. And especially the opportunity to just really start to recognize schools. I think far too often as we you know, have a discussion around education and what's going on educationally and, and the investment, we, we, it's important that we take a moment and, and stop, reflect, reflect, and really celebrate the fact that great things are happening across the Commonwealth. Our children are, are engaged in some great things and educators are doing phenomenal things on behalf of our communities, our institutions, and in education in general. Which kind of leads me to the second thank you. So thank you for re reinvigorating me as, as a secretary and lead educator for the Commonwealth. Uh, far too often we get so involved in, in policy work and, and, and budget work, it, it's important to take a step back, which we're doing today and I was able to do a bit um, earlier as I sat and listened and just celebrate the fact that this is about educating our future, our youth, uh, you know, both from pre-kindergarten all the way through higher education. And I think as we make the connection to Green Ribbon Schools and education in general, they both have something very important in common. And it's about looking forward and being innovative for the future, not only of the Commonwealth, but, but of, of the world, when you think of it in terms of creating a sustainable, educated workforce and um, uh, student force, as well as infrastructure that's um, you know, better managed and better supports uh, our future. And lastly, which is a little more personal in terms of thank you, I really have to, to say thank you for um, allowing me to sit here and go after uh, Secretary Quigley and Secretary Dunn. So, so they're both really amazing secretaries, but just amazing folks. So except Secretary Quigley still finds the time. He's an avid runner, and he's always active and um, really engaged. And Secretary Dunn, you know, hiker, uh, biker, you know, and, and does so many great things over the weekend. And then I come up here, and I'm like, I'm such a slacker. So, you know, I need to, I need, really need to get my sneakers on. So after I leave here today, after my last meeting, I'm going to sprint back to PDE. I'll probably do a few push-ups, sit-ups, and then, um, you know, try to try to just catch up to those two. But, but they're always in, inspiring, both at a personal and professional level, the great and incredible work that they do uh, on behalf of the Commonwealth and, and just great colleagues to work with. So thank you for allowing me to celebrate today with them. So a, a couple quick things that I have the great, uh, you know, um, the opportunity to really discuss Pillar 3, which, uh, which is one of the ways that schools are judged by. And specifically, when we're looking at Pillar 3, uh, interdisciplinary learning about key relationships between environment, 
energy, and human systems. The use of the environment and, sustain and sustainability to develop STEM knowledge, and STEM is a, is a huge uh, you know, item that we continue to work with in terms of the future. Some folks will add the A for STEAM. Um, I've heard lots of renditions uh, you know, of that as well, but we know that it's especially important that we engage in 21st century or college and career readiness skills. And also, we want to engage students to think and use the skills of thinking to prepare graduates for a technolo technology-driven economy of the 21st century. We like to say in education that we're preparing students for careers and opportunities that don't yet exist. And as you look around, I mean, we see this each and every day. So what many of our kids will be doing in the next five, 10 years, 20 years, does not yet exist. I mean, here's a great example. We're, I was listening and we're talking about school lunch investigation project. When I went to school, school lunch investigation was, what is this on my plate? <laughs> now they're really digging deeper around, you know, exactly how the, the food they're using is sustainable, is, uh, you know, is, is organic, and, and really becomes part of the whole learning community. So specifically, when we look at Charles uh, Patton Middle School, um, well, first, let me start with, with the school district of Jenkintown. Great job, I mean, a district being our state, um, you know, being recognized by the state and, and an honoree. You know, I really love the quote that was shared. We see our physical space both inside, and inside the classroom and outside the classroom as an extension of our students and community learning center. So that just really encompasses everything about education. It's not just about the traditional classroom. It's about what's going on outside of the classroom in the school building and throughout the community. And I'll kind of jump into our community college partner as well. The creation of community gardens not only engaging students and families and faculty members uh, as part of this environment, but using the environment, using an outside lab to create a sense of community throughout the campus. And that really stood out to me. And it's a wonder that, you know, there's no wonder that they're, um, they're recognized nationally. And Charles Patton Middle School, our first, um, you know, K-12 school recognized throughout the state, as we shared, being able to celebrate uh, first and being able to celebrate education uh, throughout the Commonwealth is, is my distinct pleasure and honor. So 90, pleasure and honor. So 90%, 95% of the produce grown in these spaces are provided to charity, mainly the Chester, Chester County Food Bank with approximately 7,000 pounds having been donated thus far. So students are not only learning about growing and harvesting, but they're also learning about service. They're also learning about engaging. They're also learning about providing uh, food and opportunities for the needy. And I think together, all of that really encompasses what we do in education. We prepare for the future, we educate the present, but we, at the same time, we learn and we serve. So with that, it, it is an absolute honor to, um, to invite up and to really engage with our honorees today. And we'll be presenting certificates. Should I just run into it or do we want to? Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> I, I'm like the worst person to, to, um, to, to invite up here because I just kind of run through the agenda. Um, so great pleasure that I offer certificates of achievement to our honored schools. Um, so let's invite Zorian uh, Debenko up, our, the business administrator from the school district of Jenkintown. And we'll celebrate you. For the recognition and for the honors. Thank you. And you have a, and, and can you have a minute up here if you'd like to? Uh, no, I just like to thank you uh, for all your op uh, cooperation. And I think uh, this award wouldn't be possible without the hard work of our staff, our community, and our professionals. Again, thank you for your recognition. Doing photos after everyone. <laughs> See, I jumped so quickly into it, I lost my, I lost my page. Um, so next, we'd like to honor Charles Patton Middle School. So we'll invite Principal Tim Hoffman up for an award and to um, share a few words if you'd like. Hey. Likewise, I, I don't have a lot to say other than thank you, um, especially to my staff and, and my crew that made it here with us today. I uh, couldn't be more proud of them, couldn't be more proud to be the principal of Patton Middle School. It's, um, 
If I give, if I give anybody any advice, any administrator any advice, is, is find, the, find the runners in your building, the people that are, that are, that are the go-getters, and support them and support them wholeheartedly, and they'll do amazing things for your school. And uh, the people that were involved in, in this project at the school really were our runners. And they, uh, so sometimes it's a, a good leadership strategy to, to equip the people that need to be equipped and then get out of their way um, because uh, they're going to create and they're going to do amazing things. So my, first of all, thank you to, to my team. Thank you for everyone, every organization that supports this, this award. Because uh, I can't think of anything more important as a school leader than to, to prepare our kids for a future as, as uh, Secretary Rivera said, it, it doesn't exist yet, and the jobs that don't exist yet. And uh, I can't think of anything more important at, in a, at the school level than thinking about student wellness, uh, STEM education, environmental education, and sustainability. Um, you know, we're proud of our, of our test scores at, at Patton Middle School and in our district, uh, but also equally proud of, of our, our initiatives about kids uh, that are focused on kids and their, their future and their environment. Because uh, it's not always just about how well they perform uh, on standardized testing, but it's also about how well they perform in their environment that they're in while they're doing so. And research certainly supports that their environment has a major impact on how well they do. So uh, thank you to everyone. Thank you for your support. Um, thank you. And last, but definitely not least, we'd like to invite Dr. Mark Erickson, the president of Northampton Community College, uh, to please come forward, accept the certificate, and share a few words. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Um, I was told I have one minute to speak, and if you know anything about college presidents, that's usually not what happens. But I'll be exceedingly short. Um, first of all, thank you for this honor. Um, we are awfully proud at Northampton to be receiving this sort of recognition, and certainly to be one of only nine colleges across the, the country that were honored this sort of way. But we didn't do any of this to get these sorts of awards. Um, we did this because our campus has a deep and, I would say, growing commitment to sustainability. And as an educational institution, we believe that it's awfully important for us to model this for our students, to teach them how to be great citizens, but also wonderful stewards of the planet that we're part of. So we're doing some exciting things. The team, we have a team of about 10 that are here today representing the college who do incredible work. And I'm just gonna call out three of them to, to, to let you know who they are. Kelly Allen, who's an English professor sitting right here, runs our East 40 garden. Um, that is a wonderful learning laboratory and connection to our, to our community. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Sylvia Hoffman, who sits over here, sits on our foundation board, but was also the architect for our Monroe campus, which is spectacular, but should be gold lead certified. I think we're receiving that sort of certification. Um, and just models wonderfully what it means to be a sustainable campus. And certainly last but not least, the outgoing president of our student government, Jose Galarza. Where's Jose? Where are you? Who spearheaded an effort on the part of our students, really a grassroots effort, to minimize our use of plastic bottles on our campus. Incredible work that he did. So I'm proud of all of you. I'm proud of the college. And I thank everyone for honoring us in this sort of way. Thank you very much. I'm just so happy. I can't stop smiling. <laughs> Um, so um, I, I wanted to also add that in May, just about a month ago, the Charles Patton Middle School became the first school to receive the, the green flag from EcoSchools, which is the highest honor from EcoSchools USA. So congratulations to Patton on their dual achievements and to all the schools for their exemplary leadership. And because we could only allow one representative from each school up on stage, I'd like to take just a moment and ask all the representatives from all the schools to please take a minute and stand up. I know some of you were called out, but you're all here and you're all important. Please stand up and if we could all give a round of applause. And please send that back. I know there's many, many uh, more of your colleagues and students and, and parents and community who could not be here today um, that are deserving of that applause. Uh, so now I would like to invite our generally, General Assembly members who are here today with us, um, some of whom um, are, are going to come up to the podium and say a few words, some of whom um, just said that they would like to um, 
to, to sit back and listen. So hopefully I, I got all that straight. Um, so forgive me if I, if I, if I didn't, because we are a little bit on the fly with that. So, um, so first, um, uh, Representative Stephen McCarter, would you like to come up? Thank you very much. And again, this is an exciting time for uh, those of us who've had the opportunity to teach. And uh, I was a teacher for 35 years. And I must tell you, um, really, when you talk about green schools and you talk about opportunities to lead and to show the rest of the community and to show all of the area and the state of Pennsylvania to have this opportunity to do these programs, to have this program available, makes it so important to students and getting them involved and seeing not only to, you know, for the jobs that are coming in the future that we don't know what they are, but also to take on the big issues, the big issues of life, whether they be climate change, whether they be sustainability in all of our communities. These are the things that really this type of program does so well. And I couldn't be more proud of Jenkintown uh, as a wonderful little borough that those of you who don't know it need to visit Jenkintown because it is a beautiful little place, walkable community, just a great place for everyone to come together. And they do so well that it's often said that everybody in Jenkintown is on at least one borough commission or on a board or something else. And everybody there plays a part in bringing the community together to make these programs so successful. So I'm so happy for all the honorees and everything you do. And I know very well the North Hampton campus, and I love what they've done and, as well. And so for everybody, this is a monumental achievement for all the three here today. And I thank everybody for all their work. Thank you. Thank you, Representative McCarter. And we follow you on Twitter. <laughs> Thanks for the retweets. And if anyone changed their mind, it's OK. We'll let, we'll let you come up. So Representative Marsha Hahn. Thank you. And first, congratulations to all the recipients. And if any of you knew anything about legislators, we're very territorial. So we were fighting over who was going to come here today for Northampton Community College because they span two counties, Northampton and Monroe. I said the, count, the uh, campus, the main campus is in my district, so I won. Um, and, they, and they all let me win. But I am joined by Representative Jack R Rader. <laughs> Sorry, Jack. By Representative Jack Rader, who uh, the Monroe campus is in his district. Representatives Rosemary Brown and Dave Parker, also from Monroe. And from Northampton County, we have Representatives Julie Harhart, Joe Emmerich, Steve Samuelson, and Bob Freeman. Did I miss any of us? because I'll be in big trouble if I did. Yeah. But on behalf of the residents of the 138th and all of Northampton and, and Monroe counties, I want to congratulate Dr. Erickson, president of Northampton Community College, and his staff on winning the Green Ribbon Schools Award and being recognized nationally for their efforts. Northampton County Community College's statement of values mentions its emphasis on excellence, innovation, and sustainability, accountability, integrity, engagement, and vision. Winning this award is a reflection of all those values. This is the first time the higher education institutions have been invited to submit an application to the program, which makes those of us in the community proud to say our community college was among the first to be recognized for its efforts. Northampton County Community College is known as our reason for, in our region for the quality of education, and adding a green ribbon awards to the resume will do nothing to tarnish that image. For that, we say thank you and congratulations for a job well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, I'm now going to call Senator Mario Scavello. How do I follow her? You know, my gosh. <laughs> very nice, Marcia. You know, I'm, I share uh, Northampton Community College uh, in my senatorial district with Senator Lisa Boscolo, who's, who's not here right now. But uh, so in, we share it together, and we're very, very proud of uh, Northampton, Community, uh, Northampton Community College. And, and, and all of the, the recipients here, because you know, you teach by example. You don't just pre preach green, you, you, you do it, you did green. You built, you built these facilities. And um, just to, I'm going to brag about Northampton Community College because you, you say a warm feeling, you know. Well, let me walk into that, in, into that college, and I 
recommend that you guys take a trip there. Because no matter what time of the day, there's students learning, sitting down, and it's such a warm feeling to learn in. You know, it's not like the normal school, you know, it, 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 it's bright. Uh, it really takes advantage of nature. Um, what's most interesting, there's 205,000 square feet a campus, and their electric bill is less than, uh, gosh, was it four times the size? Mm -hmm. And it's much yeah. of the small facility that they had, their electric bill is 87,000, whereas they were paying more than 87,000 and, and one, one, uh, one fourth of what, they, what they're in today. Uh, they've taken advantage of car, with carports, with, with solar above it. They even have, if you drive an energy efficient vehicle, you got special parking spaces. You know, uh, it's it's really a unique uh, uh, facility, and it's it's in it's in in the center of Monroe County, and we're very very proud of it. Big big employer for our area, and um, I just um, I know you're going to get the green uh, certification. Is if not, we're going to go to D.C. and make sure that we get it. <laughs> but uh, again, I'm happy for everyone. It's, it's a pleasure joining joining up here with the um, with the with the three uh, secretaries. Um, I, I, I think we're blessed with three excellent secretaries. I, I, the process of the nomination process with all three of them, and uh, very, very supportive of all three and what they're going to do. They're going to do good things for the Commonwealth. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Am I missing anyone else that would like to speak? No. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. As we close our award ceremony today, let me again thank you each for being here. With your continued support, Pennsylvania will surely be a leader in the green and healthy schools movement. We look forward to continuing to work with our state partners on the next round of Green Ribbon. So keep an eye out for the 2016 applications that will come out later this summer. And we also hope to see you again here next year with a new round of honorees. And in the meantime, please join us on Twitter and Facebook at PA Green Schools. Visit our website at pagreenschools.org or ask us how you can become the next Pennsylvania Eco School. And thank you all and see you next year. And I think I missed out on a page. But um, we are going to come back up here for, we're going to welcome the schools back up here for photos. We also, Heidi has um, energy education kits also for each school um, to hand out. So hopefully there was nothing else really important on that page because it's now sitting on the ground. <laughs> so thank you everyone and we'll see you next year. <laughs>